Hello, this is Mike from Storytelling with Data, and thanks for joining us for Let's Create a Line Graph in Excel. This lesson is finding the right look. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to use color, shape, size, labeling, and other techniques to make sure that your graph looks exactly the way that you want it to look. At the end of our last lesson, plotting the data, which if you haven't watched yet, I advise you to check out. This is where we left off with our graph. We were plotting six months worth of sales data and three months worth of forecasted sales data onto a line graph. Here's what that graph looks like. It's not bad, but what we need to do is use additional color, additional markers, and additional information like that to make sure that the message we're trying to convey with our graph comes across as clearly as possible. So here's what we're going to do. First, let's take a look at our axes. I'm not sure that our axes are exactly where we want them to be right now. For one thing, all of our axes should be labeled. So let's take a minute here and add some labels to our axes. Here, our vertical axis doesn't actually have a label, but what I would like to do is have a label that is actually horizontal so it's easier to read. So what we're going to do, instead of putting a label in on the vertical side next to this axis, we're going to create a little bit of room here at the top of our chart, and we're going to simply type in a label. We're going to insert a text box right here, and we're going to write in thousands of US dollars, USD, because by the way, our sales data here is not 100 to zero, it's 100,000 to zero. So we need to make sure that the right units are labeled. Let's make sure that our text matches the same text on our axis. And there we go. Well, there we almost go. As a matter of fact, the color doesn't exactly match, which brings up another point. I'm not sure that I like how dark the color is that we're using for the font in our axis. Let's change that. And make that color a lighter gray. I'm going to use the same lighter gray all the way around. Looks good. Now here on the bottom, we have months that run from October through June. That generally cuts across more than one year, but we don't have our years labeled anywhere on this axis, and that's a problem. We do want to do it. Now, we could put the year next to every one of those months, but that seems unnecessary. It seems like it would clutter things up. So what we should do is just include the year every time there's a new year that switches over. So again, what I'm going to do here is add a text box manually. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this text box that I was using for the in thousands label and I'm going to paste it right here. Change that to be the year, which was 2019. Copy it again. And when it turns over into January of 2020, I'll put 2020 right there. Now the text for this axis, actually let me look at the format pane here. What is the text size for my axis? This text is actually a little too big on my axis. I don't want it to be quite that big. I'm going to drop it down to 14 point text. Now, because I've written out USD in my text here, I don't actually have to have the dollar sign cluttering up my axis here. So I'm going to get rid of that. I right-clicked there to get to my format axis pane. 
going down to number. It's currently formatted as currency. I don't want it as currency. I just want it as number. Zero decimal places. Looks good. Let me go back into my chart. Perfect. I'm grabbing these handles around my plot area to define how much room there is for the actual chart. And then the text that goes around it will be spaced out nicely. Some of this is just fit and finish. You want to be, sometimes you want to be a little bit more finicky about where you put your text and make sure that everything is lined up nicely, but that gives it a nice professional look. Even if you have to make an end run around what Excel really wants you to do and type in things manually. So that's enough for now for our axes. Let's talk about the color here that we're using in this chart. Our line is blue. Why is our line blue? It is blue for one reason and one reason only, and that is because Excel has decided that that's the color it should be. Well, maybe we want to use color differently. Maybe we want to use color to focus our audience's attention on specific elements of this chart, especially as we develop it more. So let's make this color more neutral for now. Let's make it a gray. Let's make sure we're clicking onto our data series and look over in our format pane and see that the line, see it's set to automatic. That means Excel, please pick the color you think is right. No, no, no. I will pick the color, thank you very much. I want it to be a solid line and I'm gonna pick this middle gray from my second column of colors here. That's the color I'm gonna go with for now before I want to make any specific changes to it, any specific focuses to it. So now my line is gray, good. Um, I would kind of like to see the markers right now in my line. Now we don't always want all of our markers to show, we wanna have a reason to show them. But for now, I would like them to be emphasized so that I can then pull back and leave in the markers that I think are the most important to see. So here from our format pane, we look over to marker. Let's start with marker options. There are built-in options right now. We had turned them on in our last lesson, but we made them very small. They were only five points. So let's make them actually about 15. But you can see now we have nice large circles to mark each one of our data points. And to my eyes, that actually doesn't match so well with the width of the line. Now we talked about you can use size to distinguish things in our charts. And right now our line is not especially thick and I would prefer a thicker line here. So let me go back to selecting the data series. I have the line marked. The width is two and a quarter points. Let's make it four points. When you're deciding how thick to make your lines or how big to make your markers, it's sort of uh, an art rather than a science. But keep in mind that a lot of times if you're going to be presenting this in a room in front of people, or if you're not sure how close people are going to be able to get to your chart, you know, if they're not gonna have their face right up on it like this, then you can't make very thin lines. You can't make very small markers and you can't put a ton of series in there. You have to imagine that somebody is very far away from the chart and they're gonna to have to see it at a distance. So what you want is actually slightly thicker lines than you might think look good when you're right up on your computer because that way it'll be visible from the background, from the back of the room. So in this case, because Maybe I'm not sure where this is going to be used. I want to err on the side of caution and make sure those lines are thick enough that they're going to be seen from wherever people are sitting or standing if they're far away. Now we have visible markers, we have a larger size markers, and we have a wider line. What else can we do to this chart to clean it up a little bit, to make it look closer to exactly like what we want it to look like? Well, one problem that I currently have with this chart is the title. The title of the chart is the incredibly distinctive, wholly original sales. This is nowhere near good enough. Our chart titles need to be a lot more descriptive than that. So I want to change this chart title right now. I want to make it 
six month sales forecast sales not forecast but it is partially forecast it's the six month sales revenue and forecast and another thing I want to do with my title which I want to do with all of the titles of my graphs and charts as I want to align it to the left. I really don't like it floating out in space like this. And the way that people perceive things, the way that people read things is they start at the top left and then they sort of scan down in a Z pattern. So what you want to do is put your information at the top left that you think is going to introduce people to whatever it is that they're about to see. This means chart titles. This also means slide titles. But in this case, we're just doing our chart. So let's put our chart title all the way at the left. And I don't really like that thick text all that much. I want a darker. Actually, I want to match the color of this line. I want it to match the color of my chart title. And this is because I want people to have a connection between the text that they see and where in the chart they can find that information. So right now, all of the information in the chart is exactly the same as what the title of the chart says. It's the six month sales revenue and forecast. So they know that if they see the same color, they should be seeing the same data. It should match. It's a subtle thing that helps to tie your chart together and the information together. So my title is now more descriptive, my title is more aligned to the left, my title is aligned to the left, and it's a descriptive title. So there's one last thing that we're going to have to do to this chart before we call it a day for today, and that is to make sure that we can distinguish between the two types of data that we have in this single series. The title of our chart gives it away. It's the sales revenue and a forecast, but there's nothing right now in this chart that's going to distinguish between actual data and forecast data, and that is a huge concern. We definitely need to distinguish between real data and projected data, so we can do that by changing any of the sort of things that we've talked about earlier in this lesson. Color, size, shape, even marker type. So let's go ahead and do that for the three months that are going to be projected data in what we see in front of us. And that would be the April, May, and June months in our chart. So this is when we get into what we sometimes call brute force Excel. When you want to format a single point or a single line segment on your data series, it's not as hard as you might think. When you click on a data series, by default, every data point in that series is highlighted. But if you click again on any one point, then you're going to be able to change just that point. So here I've clicked on the point that represents June of this year, which is a point of forecast data. So I'm going to want to change the marker. I'm going to want to change the line that leads up to the marker. I'm going to want to make it a dotted line in this case, because that's what I think will emphasize the fact that this is projected data versus actual data. And I'm probably going to change the line width to make it a little less prominent. And I might even change the color. So let's get started on doing that. We're just the segment between May and June. Here I am in the format data point part of the format pane. I'll start with line. Instead of solid line, well, it's still going to be a solid line. But instead of four points, I'm going to make it two points. So you can see that that line segment got smaller. I'm also going to make it a dashed line. I'm going to pick this next one down there. That's the sort of dashed line I like. Now, before we go any, any further, I want to say that there's going to be a lot of changes that we're going to make to each of these three data points that we have to modify. We're going to change, as I said, the line width the dashed line. We're going to change the marker, a lot of things about it. Now we can go through each one of these and do each piece of them individually, or we can make sure that we're doing the same changes to all three. So one of the keyboard tricks, one of the keyboard shortcuts that I really like in Excel is Control Y or Command Y if you're on a Mac, which is the redo tool, which will do whatever you just did again to the next point that you click on. 
Unfortunately, it only remembers one change at a time. So if I'm gonna make changes across, for instance, three different data points, I might make one change, then click on the next data point and hit control Y, and then click on the third data point and hit control Y. Then I'll make the next change I wanna make and cycle back through. And the reason that I do it this way is so that I'm sure that I'm making the same changes to every one of the data points that I wanna make these changes to instead of manually doing it. It's not so much that it saves time, it's just a little bit more secure in making sure that it's a consistent thing. So I'm gonna back up. So here's where I started. Let me make that line width two points instead of four. I can now click on this data point and I do command Y and it changes that line. Click this one, command Y, changes that line. Now I can make that dashed line again, go back to this marker, change it, go back to this marker, change it. Now I wanna change the markers like we said before. Instead of a solid fill, I would like it to of that gray. Maybe I want my solid fill to be a much lighter gray. And maybe I want the border of my marker instead of this blue. And by the way, I don't even want that for it to be blue. I would rather there be no marker at all for the actual data points and just a slight outline for the projected ones. So let me do the change that I just did to all of my other data points. Now I want to change the border color. Yeah, that's fine if that's the border color. Go back. I want the border itself to be dashed. Apply that to my other markers. Actually, I'm pretty happy with that right now. What I'm not happy with is all of these other markers having this blue border. I want no border for all of my actual data points. So let me propagate that down. All right. So where are we? Right now it looks like my plot area has a border. I have no idea why that is. That's what we want. So one last thing I'd like to do here is add some data labels to my points. Easy enough to do. Click on our data series, right click, and so add data labels. Now our data labels show up. If you click on the labels themselves, you'll be able to format them. So that's what I want to do. Here over in Format Data Labels, the number, yep, yeah, I want it to be a number. That's too many decimal places. I would prefer to be one decimal place. Go into Label Options. I would prefer not to see the leader lines, and I would prefer them to be above the line. I can also directly change the type. That's Good. I think they're a little big. Let's make them smaller. Make them even smaller than that. No, that's too small. And I want it to be uh, bold, medium, let's say. Now, you can also change the position of each individual label by clicking and dragging it. So, this one that's hanging out here on my axis. The first time I click, I click everything, every data label in my series. If you click a second time, then you get just that label. It works the same as it does when you're clicking on a data point. I got this one, I'm gonna drag it into place. This one, I wanna give it a little more room because it's sort of touching the line. This one, same thing. And now this one here, because it is projected data and not actual data, I want to change the color of the font again, just like I did change the color of the line. So here I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change that color to a different gray. And 
just to finish up, I'm going to change the color of that line because I realized that that line is still the wrong gray. I think this is a better color gray because that will match. Use my control Y trick. There we go. And now you have a chart based on where we started from to where we are now is much more descriptive of what is actually happening. Our data labels, our data labels are present so we can see what the actual values are. And we will, once we've decided what our story is that we're trying to tell, we'll take away the labels that are meaningless and we'll add more context around the labels that are meaningful. We have a better title, we have better access labels, we have a more intentional color plan, and we have a way to differentiate the actual sales data from the projected sales data. So we'll go deeper into conveying the actual story by including essential context in our next lesson. And I hope you'll join me. Thanks for watching.